Hello, Internet. I'm Ryan of Ryan Builds Wheels. Bricking it. First ever self-shot and self-edited video. That's uh, that's pretty exciting. See how it goes, shall we? I'm going to be taking you through me building a pair of wheels. This pair of wheels. This pair of shiny track wheels using shiny track hubs from Mac over in Poland. Let's see what we can achieve together. This pair in 24-28 spoke count, suitable for our rider. They're made from 70-75 aluminium. They're very well machined. Axles, end caps, hub shell bodies, and lock rings, all out of aluminium. Stainless steel hardware on this particular pair. Upgrades to titanium also available. Super simple to service as well. All you ever need to do if you want to replace your bearings in one of these, which due to the tolerances that back keep, it's not really going to be needed. Take out one of your bolts, just so it doesn't go missing. We're going to undo this bolt ever so slightly. Bring in some form of hub support tool. The one I'm using here is from Hope. And we're just going to give that a little whack on the end there with a hammer. At which point your axle will all pop right out and we can take a look at the axle and the bearings in there. Bearings are a high quality affair from EZO or EZO over in Japan, really well respected bearing manufacturer and bearing bores are nice and clean. If you look down in there you'll see that actually these are single sealed bearings that's a good idea for their intended use on the track. Having only one seal on the outer edge means those bearings are going to run a lot more smoothly. Axles, similarly, very well machined. Nice surface finish on there, as you'd expect. It's a nice solid bit of kit. Let's bring in the rear. One of the nicest things I like about these hubs is if you get max own lock ring it's just how smoothly the interface between those threads and the lock ring uh, feels in hand really nice quality to that these knurled rings of course stainless steel no slipping here apart from my camera of course the rims i'm using are from a factory that i share with several other high-end builders in the uk they're a 6066 T6 heat treated alloy. The heat treatment means they're a little harder wearing when it comes to rim brake versions like this. A lot of other rims are made from 6061. More on rims again in the future. This in particular is our 30 mil version. It's a volume back or silver. I call it the Sprint. Other people call it something else. It's a great alternative to rims such as the Kinlin XR31T and is welded as opposed to pinned. With our spoke calculations performed, it's time to grab some spokes and maybe use this, the wondrous Morizumi spoke cutting machine. But, oh no, wait, we've chosen to use D-lights. Uh, more on that in a minute, but they're boxed, so uh, you can hear all about the spoke machine another time. As mentioned, we're using D-lights. D-lights come from Sapim. Sapim are pretty much the only spoke brand I'll ever want to use. Same with a lot of other builders out there. More on spokes another time. The riders opted for brass nipples. Why have we gone with brass? It's because they're shiny and so are the hubs. And... So are the spokes. Let's go ahead and lace this rim. Lacing is a simple exercise and really all it is is getting your spokes into the hub so you can then attach them to the rim via your nipples. I am going to be lacing this wheel in a two-cross tangent pattern. That's very simple. We could have a lace radially. Uh, radial means the spokes would go straight out from the hub at a 90-degree at a angle, taking the, the quickest path they possibly can to the rim. Saves you a little bit of weight and due to the way that wheels work, also means that it's a little stiffer in the lateral, that's side to side blade. However, for this build, thanks to the aesthetics we wanted to achieve, then we've gone for a tangent pattern. You'll note that at the moment, I'm lacing entirely by hand, because I haven't crossed any of the spokes as of yet, I don't need to use the nipple assembly tool. Let's crack on.
the wheel is now laced, all of the spokes are in, they've been crossed, valve hole vision has been achieved, and that means that our logo on the hub is going to line up with the valve hole when the wheel is done. This is simply a nice aesthetic consideration, and it shows our customers and ourselves that we take pride in what we do. Before we end the stand, what we're going to do is set the spoke path on the outbound spokes. What that means is I'm going to be taking each of these spokes and just putting a slight bend in them where they cross over the hub. And the reason for this is to give the spokes a cleaner path towards the rim and that is going to help to increase the fatigue life of these spokes over time. Again, something we'll be going into in much more detail in the future, but worth mentioning now. Let's crack on. Sweet. Wheels all laced up. It's time to get in the maturing stand. You've all seen a maturing stand before. They're pretty normal things. Bike shops have them. You might have even used one, but this... Let's get rid of that. I prefer to use this. What is it? This is a PK Lee Special 250. It's a piece of chewing stand art all the way from the good folks over in Germany. And um oh it's it's machined brass and aluminium joy with all these special bits and pieces and big old clock faces and oh yeah, it's, it's super stiff. Uh, next steps for me are pretty simple, a little bit of lubricant. Always lubricate your spoke and nipple interface and your rim and nipple interface as well. Lots of people are going to make jokes about that, it gets a little bit dull, truth be told. And I've also got a driver to drive it down. The idea of the driver is that it's got a set depth and that depth is going to allow me to drive all of these spokes and nipples down to the same desired depth to start with and speed my job up a little bit. This particular driver comes from BSC Tools, who are based over in Wales, and we'll be dealing and talking about them in a future video. So with that done, we've got a little bit of floppiness in some of those spokes, and now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna add two turns to all outbound spokes and three and a quarter turns to all inbound spokes. Let's just add a little bit of that tension. As tension starts to build up, I actually want to do what's called overwinding. We'll focus on that kind of stuff again in the future, and I'll be talking about hints and tips and general wheel building shortcuts that are still going to re result in an excellent wheel. Uh, but for now, we're just getting some initial tension into the wheel and <clears throat> making sure that we're not, as somebody running a professional workshop, not wasting time bringing tension up little by little. I want to reach a roughly, a rough target tension that's going to allow me to work and start truing, which means making the wheel straight, and tension balancing the spokes. Anyway, and as you can see, whilst there's a little bit of a hop in this wheel already, it's, it's relatively true from where I'm looking, and that's going to take many moments to get out when we get the dial indicators on there. Wheel health and a quality wheel build depends very much on accurate and even spoke tension, and therefore the next stage for me is going to be to start measuring and correcting spoke tension as I work towards my final desired tension. To measure spoke tension, I require a tensionometer. This in particular is, again, the PK Lee tensionometer, also manufactured by them for Sapin. And the way they work is to apply a given force from the spring in the tool to the spoke. For a given spoke, it will then deflect by a certain amount. We're looking for a tension of 125 kilos, and that means I'm looking for readings of about 2.65 worth of deflection. The reason I am doing only one side of the wheel to start with is that then when I go to the other side of the wheel, I know there's only one thing affecting its true, and that will be the tension on the side that I have not 
tension balanced. So I can take a very accurate reading and get an idea of which spokes in particular are causing a problem. All right, this wheel set is done and dusted. Everything's been trued, tension balanced, spokes have been stress relieved. It's been an iterative process. If you were watching the time lapse of the wheel build, you'd have seen that several things were repeated, such as the stressing of the wheel. You'd have seen that I was working on both radial, lateral, and tension balancing. Again, future video, we will be going through a lot of the techniques that I use and also a whole series on how to build the best wheels you possibly can at home as well, um, as well as hints and tips or classes for more professional types. But very happy with how these came out. The Mac Hubs were an absolute joy to work with, and it's been an absolute pleasure having you guys along for the ride. I'll leave you now with some detail shots of the completed wheel set ready for before it ships out to their new owner. I'm sure they will have a lot of fun riding this new pair of wheels. And thanks very much for joining me. It's been a joy editing this first ever video. Remember, you can find me on Instagram as at Ryan Builds Wheels. And so as you can stay up to date with whatever's happening on this channel, remember to hit that like button, subscribe and sign up for notifications so as you'll know when the next video comes out. See you on the flip side.